If you're over 35 and you've noticed changes to your menstrual cycle or changes in how you feel in the build-up to your period, you might just be entering perimenopause where progesterone falls off a cliff. So if this sounds like you, make sure to stick around because I'm going to share with you the four most common signs of low progesterone that I see every day in my clinic, one of which is my one and only constant perimenopause symptom. And hi, if we haven't met, I'm Chelsea Green, holistic hormone specialist. I help women transition from perimenopause post-menopause naturally. If that sounds like the type of thing that you're interested in, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you never miss a video. So progesterone. What is it? Why do we even need it? Progesterone is the sister hormone of estrogen and it's released from the corpus luteum in the ovary in the second half of the cycle after ovulation. And progesterone is critical for a regular and healthy menstrual cycle, for conception and for maintaining a healthy pregnancy. But in addition to that, progesterone is involved in so many other functions including thyroid function, bone formation, it's our anti-anxiety hormone, and it helps with sleep. So whereas estrogen is high energy and growth, progesterone comes along and balances everything out and calms things down. So in addition to being a really important hormone in terms of a healthy menstrual cycle, it's also a really important hormone in terms of our mental health. But from our late 30s to early 40s, progesterone can go AWOL as we move into perimenopause. And whilst this video is focusing on perimenopause and changes in progesterone, progesterone, it's important to note there are other reasons why progesterone could be low, including stress, over-exercising, head injuries, nutritional deficiencies, hypothyroidism, and certain medications, including antidepressants, the pill, and synthetic progestins. So let's look at those most common symptoms that I see of low progesterone, particularly in those early stages of early perimenopause. The first of which is changes to the menstrual cycle. Your cycle might become irregular in terms of having shorter or longer cycles, or it might become irregular in that you have shorter or longer bleeds. You might have lighter bleeds, heavier, more painful bleeds, or you might have mid-cycle spotting. And in addition to this, you might have more extreme mood swings and night sweats in the build-up to the period. When we have low levels of progesterone, we naturally end up in an estrogen dominant state because we don't have those nice high levels of progesterone to balance out estrogen. And with that, we can see those estrogen dominant symptoms like moodiness, irritability, rage, heavy flooding, painful pain, periods and breast tenderness. Next up we have sleep issues. Progesterone interacts with GABA, a neurotransmitter in the brain that helps to lower brain activity and prepare the body for sleep. So less progesterone means less GABA and sleep issues. But in addition to that, progesterone helps with sleep as well. So it's a bit of a double whammy. And typically it tends to be issues falling and staying asleep. But like I said, with changes to the cycle, it can be night sweats as well, particularly in that stage or in the build up to the period. Building on that, less GABA and less of its calming influence, as well as less progesterone and less of its anti-anxiety influence sees an increase in anxiety. In my clinic, women tend to present with an increase in anxiety before the period or at ovulation, but it can be at any time in the cycle. And it can be anything from general worry, worrying about the little things that never used to bother you, to uh, increased panic and uh, panic attacks. And often things that are normally really easy, like driving or flying or deciding what to buy for dinner, can become a source of great anxiety at this time. Okay, so the fourth sign of low progesterone that I commonly see in my clinic, and the one that I personally struggle with, is hormonal health headaches or migraines. Whilst they are a sign of low progesterone, it could be that that low progesterone is causing tension in the body and the tension is causing the headaches, or that the low progesterone is causing issues with histamine and the histamine is bringing on migraines, or that estrogen dominant state that we naturally end up in with low progesterone levels causes vasodilation. So treating the headaches and migraines can sometimes be a little bit tricky, but always start with uh, trying to increase progesterone levels and reduce stress. And in my case, the homeopathic remedy histamine has helped hugely and my migraine has been downregulated to a mild headache. So these are the four signs of low progesterone that I see regularly in my clinic. The good news is we've got lots of natural ways to increase progesterone, first of which is stress management. Tools like yoga nidra, meditation, walking in nature, they can all help to lower stress and increase progesterone production. Eating foods that are rich in vitamin C, vitamin B6, healthy fats and zinc, all 
all have an affinity for progesterone production. And then we have some herbs like Agnes Castus or Chaseberry that help with progesterone production as well. So if this video is resonating with you and you'd like to know more about how to increase progesterone levels naturally, make sure that you are subscribed because this is the first video that I am doing in a series on how to increase progesterone naturally. I'm going to be covering foods that help with uh, progesterone production as well as herbs and supplements and mistakes to avoid when trying to increase progesterone because yes there are a few mistakes and in fact if you've got any questions in how to increase progesterone levels naturally make sure to pop them in the comments below and I'll ensure that they're covered in the upcoming videos.